four, capture and defend your strongholds. That is, if you're not afraid of a little side fire. Bravo, when I'm playing this map, I'm telling everyone, bring it into the subway. Let's just hold up shop here. Where are we going to expect to see these pros holding the ball, though? Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of back PD holds, back A holds, um, things like that. I think, you know, you can get into some tram holds, but I think Austin and I are on the same page. The back tram holds just get really nasty and really nady, and they're kind of, it's kind of annoying to hold at C. So expecting yes. to see a little bit of B, a little bit of PD. But as we know, you don't always get to choose. Uh, sometimes the game decides for you where the ball holds are going to have to go, and you're going to have to kind of be ready to just roll with those punches. Mark, you were saying Team Giggs is looking like the top dogs after our first opening round. They are going up against Team Sunny here. What's your expectation in this battle between some PC heroes? I want to see them uh, locking down some of these setups, like Andy mentioned, but also look for them to make rotations. You know, you see on the streets, you have a couple of lanes to play with, and if you have a couple of kills fall where a few of your teammates uh, go down and you have that odd ball in your possession, you can actually rotate towards the respawners and get an extra 10, 15 seconds and, uh, and milk that ball time. You know, we've got the Twitch drop, right? We've got the uh, the milk the milk uh, nameplate that's uh, coming in. That's what we're talking about. Milking that is an extra few seconds, and on game types like this, uh, especially on Halo Infinite, odd ball, those 10, 15 seconds can make all the difference. Spanker in the middle of the map is what everyone fights for. You're going to see that time and time again. But this game mode, it's all about controlling the ball. You don't have to technically outslay, but you definitely have to set up and protect this oddball. We'll find out who has the stronger hand coming into it, who has the better teamwork, as it's not just relying on your shot. Bravo, you got players to watch in this battle. Who do you have eyes on? A lot of people asking, where's Hotshot? Well, Hotshot's power went off. But the good news is they brought in MLG Foxy last minute. Already a great three-game series under his belt as he went nearly double positive. Yeah, I think a lot of players that I'm still looking out for in this. I mean, one player we haven't talked about enough today on uh, Sony's team is going to be Coven. Uh, and right now you're going to see him loaded into the lobby. But Coven, another name. I think there's just a lot of cool Halo players that have been playing this game for a very long time that have in the past few years just made bigger and bigger names for themselves and started to build really awesome communities. And Coven is certainly one of those players as well. They're going to be watching out for this game. Yeah, that's chill. Game is loading up, so I'm going to hand you over the mic. We've got Onset. We've got Bravo. This is round number two in our round robin group stages. It's about to get spicy. Spicy indeed. Both these teams at 1-0 and o as well. Uh, one win to their name in the first series. So uh, it's going to be an interesting battle, Andy. We will get a real kind of uh, lay of the land, so to speak, when this series is done to see who might be one of our front runners. Yeah, as a reminder, Gigs is going to be Gigs, Sunny, Game Sager, Foxy, much. and Mines going up against Sony, Cali, Kova, yeah, and Vegas. But hold the phone because we're going to go over to a match that's already underway. That's going to be Team CDN and Team Aircool on the other side of the bracket. Nice shots going on, on to, uh, to Funk there on the uh, the P Street around those neon signs. And now we're going to see the first oddball being picked up. Even though kills and a push is coming in here on the B Street, you can see the oddball already being rotated away from them towards that A Tower. But with the kills going in their favor right now of uh, Team CDM, that oddball might not be longed uh, for the hands of Team Aircool for too long. That's right. It's going to be a tough one here. And uh, ball is certainly going to play different than every other game type that we've showcased so far. As we said earlier, even Strongholds on this map plays pretty different. Different. Just, just because the way that you need to push and the way you need to coordinate, just a little bit different from strongholds, but we're already seeing a back A, back cafe hold. And for some of our newer viewers as well, we should point out that you watch some old Halo, some classic Halo, you might think of Oddball as uh, first to 250 points. Uh -uh, not in Halo Infinite. It's a round-based game type now. You need 100 points on the board to, uh, to get that round. You need two out of three uh, to take things home. So a little bit of a change-up, and it's made for some incredibly exciting viewing, Andy. Yeah, going to be a difficult to grab uh, this ball here as they're going to try to wrap it around. But once that ball is just below the bottom C ledge around Neons, it can be really difficult to grab and try to bring up. As you see... Uh, what resulted there was actually some kills going in for the other side. They're going to be able to bring that ball into C as a nice thrust, though, coming in from Requiem. Big shots from Requiem, like you say. The thrust being the difference maker. You talked about the acceleration that thrust does have. There's a spike of grenade going down. A little bit of uh, damage to his own shields, but uh, it's not going to do too much. However, those shots coming in from a uh, Funk Bomb are certainly going to be doing some damage as we uh, now drop uh, jump over to 72 hours to watch his POV. And uh, looks like they held off that hole, that push, excuse me. Three dead now for the opposition team, and they're already past that 30-point mark. It's a really good start for them here. It is, and as a reminder, Team Aircool, 72 hours, Funk Bomb, and Myth, so a lot of talent on this team as well, and like you said, already a 40-0 to zero lead. Street, two Purple Street. 
Yeah, two perp. I'm gonna wait till the comms coming in as well. Yeah. Purple Street push is gonna come in. I did see the rocket launcher in their hands too, so those are gonna be some yeah, free know, kills if there's any left right. in the they're barrel, all, especially in these go, tight quarters. But look at this, Andy. The perfect subway hold right now. Tram station, whatever you want to call it. It's certainly working right now. It is. And I think one thing we should talk about is just the importance of being able to, as a ball carrier, it's going to be a trade there coming in for Myth uh, in the feet that you just saw. But one thing we got to talk about is just being the ball carrier and not only knowing, for example, right here, knowing when to play ball and rotate, but also just when to drop and shoot. Such a big difference maker in Halo Infinite as well. And that rotation coming in from uh, 72 hours as well. Just getting those extra 5, 10 seconds like we mentioned. So the scorer uh, heavily in their favor at the moment. They only need around 30 seconds of ball time to close this one out, but it's not in their hands for now. But look at this flank coming in here from air cool. There's one. Does he get the double? He does indeed. So that's going to be two dead, but his teammates not quite in position to take advantage of it now. You see that odd ball is down as we see through the... Uh, the POV here of Requiem once again. So nice shots down. The Bulldog's in front of him as well. Just came off that respawn. So he's going to have the option to pick that one up and maybe go into some of those close quarter battles inside a tram with a little bit more firepower than his opponents. Yeah, interestingly, doesn't grab it. Might not have maybe just maybe miss it off screen that did not have that Bulldog. And you have to think maybe in that moment wished he had snagged it. Uh, but they're going to try to get into the back of the base. And it's going to be Aircool just holding down with great shots once again. Good shots. Good help. They pick up that kill, turns around as well and picks up another kill as well. 71 to 12, and the oddball's still in their favor. Lovely shots with a stalker rifle as well, Andy. This weapon here, this is a devastating weapon from range, close range, whatever you want to use it. It really does do damage so, so quick. Yeah, they will finally pick up the kill in back C as well, and he's going to continue holding. That's a dangerous angle, though, if you're expecting a team pushing Neons and A. If you're sitting back, you're probably going to get roasted and toasted, and that's exactly what happened. But still, 89 points on the board. They're going to close this one out so quick. Only now nine points remaining. Ooh, nine points remaining. But as we know, the round is never over in Oddball on Halo Infinite. If you uh, pick that ball up, then uh, you can stop the scoring. You can they stop the game clock, excuse me. And you can make some crazy, crazy comebacks. And maybe that's what we're going to see here. However, 72 hours is picking up a big kill in the back of Tram, but it's traded out and Rocket's in their hands as well. So I tell you what, Tanner might have a job to do here. And if you could pick up a kill while holding that oddball, then this game could turn on his head pretty quickly. Hold the phone. Game's not over. Even in uh, top level Halo Esports, we've seen comebacks that, that where players are winning these games 100 to 99. So as Onset said, that game stop, that game clock, not game stop, the game clock will actually stop the clock if you're able to hold the ball. Anytime you see a ball hold, you actually see the time not ticking down on the game clock. Take a look right there. It's going to hold at 212 while it goes 96, 97, about to close this out. Yeah, this is going to be game. They picked up the kills they needed to while holding that odd ball. That's going to be the nice. first round going oh, to Team Air Cool. They only need one more now to close the map out. But some good signs there for Team CDN as well. A little bit more uh, coordination from them, I think, than what we saw in that first series. Yeah, certainly now. Uh, jumping on board back with Air Cool. Going to have his eyes on the ball right away. Going to push Neons here. Gets tapped a little bit by these nades. Going to try to win this battle around Bulldog. Drop shield down. Beat down as well. The Bulldog combining to take him down as Aircore now will lose their first player. Just keeping our eyes on the feed, seeing if anyone's got that ball in their hands. It doesn't look like they have for now. Rockets are going to be down here. So Funk Bong's going to pick those up, but there's that long time it takes to pull those rockets out on Halo Infinite. If you want a little tip, when you pick them up, hit the YY, and you are going to be able to shoot them a little bit quicker than you are if you just let them kind of escape from the backpack, so to speak, into your hands to be ready to shoot. But the ball is being moved towards the cafeteria that's going to be slowed down though and that's going to be the ball finally in hand they're going to move this one back to tram again yeah that ready up time that animation takes so long in halo infinite compared to other titles so do be ready for that as it takes a little bit of time for the barrels to just clink into place but some early ball time coming in here for team cdn they're going to try to win this round here forces to around three and fall if they're able to Funk bomb gets the kill inside of the base though and that's uh going to unfortunately be a little bit of a tab out which we've uh, we've all done We've all been there, Andy. We know that happens sometimes. You get a little bit of, you know, slippy fingers and that kind of thing happens. But back into the game, back into the POV here of Aircore, who's been super impressive, Andy. Really been hitting some nice shots so far. Absolutely has. As uh, we take a look and don't mind the scoreboard there. That is just a, a known issue there. It is indeed still one to zero from what you just saw. Not one round to one round. You can trust the dots, not the numbers. I always get a little bit nervous when you start talking numbers around me. We know my record when it comes to those things. It looks like... Uh, 72 hours, I mean, unfortunately, has uh, fallen out of the game. So, uh, the game when they want. 
Purple, it's going to be a, a case of them ending the That's game if they want to, or just playing this say. one out. We'll have to see what happens. I mean, pure, pure oh, sportsmanship if they do decide to play this one out. And also, I'd say confidence. Confidence as well. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think that was just a tab out. I think we might have actually seen a player get nuked from the game, so we'll have to find out exactly. We'll let the Twitch Rivals referees and admins figure out exactly what you're hearing there, but uh, we'll continue on with the game as long as it does continue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like uh, 72 hours has managed to join back into the game, so uh, we'll see how this one does play out. 46, 47, and and rising here. So uh, good points on the board here for Team CDN. No surprise to say that, of course. Being they are playing 4v3 for those few moments, but sometimes you need that lifeline, Andy. Sometimes you need something to, to shine down on you and give you that opportunity to get back into a game. Hey, man, whatever it takes. We have no idea, you know, what, what might be required, but right now they are back in this one. It's a nice kill as well for Shazam, just locking down Red Room and B Street. They will lose two players at C, though. Nice shots again, red, just red, red, narrowly red, red, misses the shots, that's and that's going to be three dead now. Red, Tana red, trying to come in to do the cleanup business for his team, but he's got two players in front of him, as we see 72 hours officially back in the game, and officially back with the odd ball in his hands. 62 to 1 the score. This would be a comeback to a, to write home about if they managed to pull this one off. Uh, you know what? It's not crazy like we talked about. Not only are these, not only, excuse me, are these possible in Halo Infinite, but this team also showing that they are talented, and there you're seeing a nice piece of display from 72 hours himself picks up a nice double there on B stairs. His teammates also, myth included, yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to clean up those final kills around bottom B. They'll get some ball time on the board as well. And maybe this is the comeback. You can see the setup around Tram here. You got 72 hours up on the bulk. You got Aircool picking up a kill. All the pieces are starting to slot together like a, a lovely looking Christmas jigsaw. But for now, they're going to have to be careful because three of their players have fallen. The setup, setup has been broken. And Shazam comes in to pick up that final kill. So now they've given that setup. They didn't get the play ball over to their opposition. Yeah, Aircool cool, trying to get in there and see what he might be able to do. But now it's going to be CDN once again, picking up a little bit of time and also some shots. Like we said earlier, being able to drop and shoot with that ball is so key so that your team is not fighting a 3v4 on those counter pushes. You want to be able to drop and shoot and help the team in those team fights. A little bit of an attempted ball rotation. I'm not sure if the ball came off of C Balk, though. So it's going to be a full rotation coming in for Shazam. Might be an opportunity here for a double kill, though. And there it is, Shazam. Doing a good job making a triple. He's got to hit the four, the funk bomb. Isn't going to give him the opportunity to as he hits that shot that he needed to. Otherwise, we're going to have another highlight on our hands. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as we take a look at Funk Bomb himself, looking at C Balk. And once again, I think he made, the, they managed to bring that ball off of C onto the street. So now they have to do a little bit of awkward fighting in back C. Maybe a little pizza jump here. Nice little hey. trick jump coming in for Funk Bomb. Hey, if you wanted to know if this, play, this guy's been playing the game, here's your answer. That is not an easy jump to do. To crouch right up onto that and uh, make that play to be a little bit unpredictable. So uh, Funk Bomb now yeah, with the Rockets in hands as well. Where is the oddball, though? That's the question. It's down on the spawn. So you can see them trying to just swarm towards it a little bit, pick up those kills, and then maybe think about bringing it back to trap. Yeah, a bit of an awkward moment there where you saw like an attempted play ball coming in from Team CDN, but they kind of left the top C. Then no one ended up grabbing it. Then it reset there. So what that tells me on set is that both teams are really just trying to play this carefully. They don't want to make the mistake. They know it's yep. a little He's bit too close, too much on the line here. So team's ball. looking for control before they grab. He's fighting me on ball. 1v1 one here. A little bit of help comes I in. However, they can't get that gun. ball out from that out. That's going to be a couple of kills actually going down to Team CDN here. So this has been a, a pretty competitive round and a pretty competitive game so far. There's 75 points on the board. Haven't managed to be overturned by quite yet. Bulldog in the hands now of Shazam. Mm -hmm. One one picking up a kill on the feed as well. 75 to 45. There's the beat down as well from Shazam. They're picking up the kills here, Team CDM. But can they get all that odd ball in their hands? Two kills now in their favor. Surely you've got to go for that ball. Yeah, surely, but now they're actually just finding one player actually on the other side who grabbed the ball. But still, that had given them enough numbers on set where they should be able to control here. And instead of going to C, they actually go for Neons for just a second, which is going to give them some rotate opportunities. Yeah, it might do, but they need to clear this final player out and get it back to Tram. And that's what the uh, the call has been, and that's what the decision has been made. But 72 hours picks up one, Fungbot picks up another, and this is a an easier break. And then a uh, ice cream cone, to be honest okay, wait, with wait, you. It's wait, just wait, falling wait, to pieces, this set up. Uh, right we're going to see the ball now go back yeah, yeah, over yeah, yeah. to the hands of Team Air. Cool. It's going to be? Hitting a little bit too close to home last night. Tasha can back me up on this, but I did have an ice cream cone that did split in two last night. I'm sorry. Luckily was able to, yeah, luckily was able to mostly recover, not losing Poor the entire guy. cone, but back to the gameplay now. Three play, three kills, excuse me, coming in for Team Air Cool. That should be some more points on the board for them. Yeah, well, we can talk about that afterwards, Andy. I know that that's Thank probably you. a little bit of an emotional moment for you. I know how much you love the ice cream, so yeah. we'll, we'll get that covered for you. Don't worry, buddy. 94 to 49, the score. Make that 50 as we're seeing a little bit of a comeback here. 
as Myth has the ball in his hands. He's also doing a good job of being a scout for his team, Andy, with that yeah. angle. Yeah, it's a great job from top seed. Like we said, not only dropping and shooting, but even he's just continuing checking that neon's angle, which is great to see from Myth. Able to make sure no one's coming see stairs, no one's coming neons, and as long as he has that watched, all his team needs to worry about is bottom mid and then B side. 95 and rising, though. 98, and that is going to be the game by the looks of things, as we're going to see the announcer let us know the round two has been won, and we're tied up at one to one here. That's annoying. Has to say, maybe a little bit of an asterisk on the round with the disconnect and the reconnect, but you take what you can get, right? Especially in these kind of tournaments where everyone wants to win. That's right. Now we're going to get to see our round number three, regardless of how we got to that round three. It's on the board, and now it's going to be an early grab actually coming in right away. So we'll have to see if uh, Team CDN can keep up this momentum and maybe even end up with a reverse sweep. Rocket that bottom man. Another uh, example of one of the new features of Halo Infinite there as well, just the ability to ping those weapons, ping different positions on the map to make sure that everyone is completely on point and specific where those weapons are falling. A couple of kills being traded out. Nice. As Funk Bomb will pick up another, but Shazam is there to trade it out. So a little bit of carnage at the start here, Andy. Nobody able to get those rockets back in their hands. Nobody able to get the oddball, maybe until right now, as it will fall into the hands of Team Echo, and it looks like they're going for that PD setup. Yeah, I think Carnage is the only way to describe that opening. Uh, both teams pretty aggressive and anxious off of the break to try to make something happen. A lot of activity bottom middle, but it finally will be a PD hold in the back for Team Aircool. You see where uh, Echo is holding this ball. This is police department. We're shortening it to PDs. Easier to call out and quicker to call out. Tanner picks up one in the feed, though, and maybe that will be the uh, the opening that they're looking for. Myth has to be very, very careful here as two of his teammates have fallen, and he's going to be chased down. He's going to be marched down here mid-map, and now the last player alive is going to be removed from the server as well for a few seconds. A perfect break coming in. Really, like you said, a perfect break. Now they're going to just hold back PE. Now the angles they need to worry about really are going to be those B stairs, B pillars, uh, bottom middle, and, of course, A. We'll see how well they can do that, but already a lot of points on the board, 36 to 13. Weak shotgun, still weak shotgun. Front bomb picks up one kill, though, and once again, the setup's looking a bit of shaky here for both teams. They've got into good positions, but the first kill is always going to the attacking team, trying to break that setup, and there is a Funk Bomb picking up one. Yeah, Myth picking up. pick up two. I mean, it's an easy break again, Andy. No one being able to really hold things down at the moment. It is, like you said, Funk Bomb gets that kill. Myth also gets a double on that push, and they're going to continue to hold not just that, but they're also doing a little bit of an A rotate, which is nice to see when you have players pushing up B Street, starting to rotate back A, starting to get a little cheeky with the cafe rotation can really be frustrating and force the opposing teams through tough chokes like those stairs and also tires. Well, somebody's get those rockets in their hands, so this might be a real opportunity for them to put some points on the board. Myth recognizing that he has to drop that oddball and win this fight as well. The shot's a little bit shaky, but 72 hours is there to help out his homie and manage to pick up that kill, so it's going to be 72 hours. Actually, in the feed, it looked like he picked up two so the rocket launcher was the difference maker. Yeah, Shazam did pick up two there as well. As they're going to continue now, just scoot it right back over to PD. You hear about that rotation. Now they're going to be expecting to see the same kind of pushes. And you hear him saying, nice kills coming in. They hit the 75 point mark already. They do indeed. It keeps on rising that score, and they're getting closer and closer to closing out this map. Myth trying to stay alive, does some damage, but gets taken down. Funk Bomb does has that that bulldog in his inventory as well to use. So it's going to be a, an opportunity for him to pick up some kills in that close quarter battle. But the grenades coming in again, and once again, like wet paper, the setup is starting to fall apart here. Air cool getting that kill a little bit too easily as he picks that one up from A. Gonna just also watch from B stairs and tires. And with already that number on the board, they should be able to continue to at least get a little bit of control. One player's pushed PD already, though. That's gonna be an obstacle. And there's a push coming mid map as well. Shazam, Shazam excuse me, is picking up a double kill in the feed, and that's gonna create some lanes for them to get aggressive on that odd ball. He's gonna pick up a third as well. So big plays coming in from the man on your screen. He picks up three in quick succession, and it always looks better when you pick up the three, you walk in, you pick up the odd ball, and you pick up some time. Gets the job done, gets one in eight corner, manages to stay alive. We've talked about just how important it is in Halo Infinite to stay alive. Even more important than past Halo titles, staying alive and maintaining that position for your team is so important. Let's go. The onslaught's coming in from both sides. It is indeed. 93 points on the board. So they only need seven here. And the ball is escaping from the uh, radical of Requiem here. He's trying to get somewhere near the Opal player to get it out of his hands. But it's not going to happen. The game is done. The game is dusted. And Team Echo will take over the win. Yeah, they take that uh, handily as they're going to win that one 2-1 to one in the end. But the wins that they did have on set were pretty convincing indeed. They certainly, certainly were. I was really impressed with the setups, though, Andy. I mean, Bro, I feel like it was, that, you know, getting into positions, getting into really the right position to actually hold the oddball around the PD, around the tram. Everything was looking good. It was just 
holding the setups that was difficult. We always talk about the first kill being important in Oddball, right? When you've got those setups, if you lose it, you kind of leave one area of the map open that you can't keep your eyes on. By the way, three, almost the same kills across the board for all of Aircool. I think three players had 27 and one player had 26. That is just insane and really rare, but let's go ahead. It really is. Let's go ahead and jump in on Jentreya and Legion. Oh, okay. Jentreya has Camouflage. That's the camouflage. Oh, I just want a one v one versus Karma. Someone clip it. Grenade comes down P one. Oh, what I've heard from Hutch there. I just want a one v one versus Karma, <laughs> which is uh, maybe something a lot of us would love to say. With the amount of uh, success he's had over the years. And speaking of Hutch, let's see what he's doing right now. Take a little bit of grenade damage on the plant side. But look at the score here. 24 to 20. This is a nervy looking game. Yeah, this is a very close game here. Even though Team Legion was able to take that first one. Oh my God. I am here for it, by the way. I'm going to go watch the VODs because Hutch and Nanners reunited. This is amazing. Anyone who grew up on the very early days of Machinima and Hutch and Nanners and Sark and uh, those early days of Call of Duty, uh, big shout out to all of you joining us here. But it is it's amazing to see Hutch and Nanners uh, back together here, and it's still a close game, like you said, just 26-23. It certainly is, and uh, some nice shots coming in from Nick Merckx oh, yeah, as well, and he may be just trying to do a little bit of a big brain play there, just knocking those crates off, seeing if anyone would take the bait, but wasn't to be done. Some good teamwork here, pushing through the closet, 27-25, to just a two-kill game between these two teams. Yeah, this is amazing, and we have some FPS legends in this game. We have players who've been playing these FPS titles for a long time, and Nick Merckx actually picks up the dub melee as well. He will stay alive in Utility. Big dubby dubs from Nick Merckx and his teammate Legion picked up a kill as well. The team captain started to set up as well, rallying the troops here. 25 to 31 as we see C Nanners now trying to move around the back of the base, trying to survive as he tries to turn his attention to the ah, coming in. But those dynamo grenades are sizzling away. The sizzle sticks as our good friend Shirzy calls them. And there's an overkill. What a time to turn over. Oh boy, yeah, the overkill came in. And also, you heard in the chat someone saying, Who's this guy in our team? Epic Noob. It looks like they did leave the game, but at some point, someone tried to get in on the action. By the way, that's not allowed at Twitch Rivals. You can watch you can watch every stream you want. Please don't join the games though. That 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 is not that is not okay, but just like that, it's 37 to 25, and what a swing coming in for the other side. Oh, it hurt him. Look at oh, this yeah. uh, swarm coming in on the base Wait. as well. <laughs> RPR gets taken down. <laughs> Sent RPR a message today. I was like, what, what are you doing playing Halo? He's like, dude, I'm an animal. I was like, okay, prove it today. Me and him know each other very, very well from uh, the Apex Legends scene. As now we're going to see a little bit of a... Cover fire coming in here from the top of the peak. Karma trying to swing in behind. You can feel that maybe the vibes are of the, that of a team who are looking to close this game out at the moment. Not quite as much intensity as we saw in the previous series, Andy. Trying to get the back back to us. He's going for it here. Just trying to put on a show is Slasher. Uh, but this team looking very strong. And what was once a 26-23 game on set is very different. 20-0 run right now? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Legion just summed up. He's like, what, did we just go on a 20-0 and run or something? Like, what, what just happened? What is happening? Le Le Legion? Hello? I'm running, chasing. Hello? We can eat. I've never, that is does, uh, well, I'm looking forward to seeing Legion's accuracy at the end of this game. One of the new things added to Halo Infinite because those shots, I don't know if he's jumped over to mouse dope, and key, what's going on, but that hard last series. they were uh, not accurate, I think is the only way to put it. Yeah, and well, not getting auto aim on that teammate as we see Legion and Nick Merckx just trying to duke it out against each other uh, right there as we, as we see some dynamos picked up as well from Slasher. He's going to move on to top mid. 48 already, just two kills away. Two kills away, camo in hands as well. Things are looking good, things are looking... Like they're just yeah. ready to be ended, to be honest with you. Uh, teams and Trey are struggling a little bit in this one, but trying to do everything they can, I'm sure, to come back into this one. Look at this. There it is. There is going to be the 50th kill coming in. A little bit of Jaws music to go alongside it as well as the back smack does come in. 50 to 30. Dominate. With that ending like a stake, it feels like I'm missing something. I know we had a, a random player join the game, but it feels like what was once a 26 23 game to end 50 to 30. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know if something happened. I, We'll go ahead and get over into Sony and Giggs right now. It's once again, as a reminder, 1-0 in favor of Giggs. On well, Giggs' team, I mentioned uh, looking one of the strongest in the tournament so far. And uh, hey man, hey man. looking like they're continuing with that kind of uh, vibe here as well. 3-6, to six, the score at the start of this. However, some nice shots coming in, but nice shots being exchanged here as uh, Sony would be taken down. So... Over now to Vegas, his teammate, trying to see what he can do. Unfortunately, he's going to just uh, pop onto our screens and be removed from them almost as quickly as he joined them. But a pretty good start here, 10 to 5. You've got to be happy with that.
Also, got to give a shout out to everyone here joining us on Twitch. We got a lot more people joining here in these later rounds. So welcome. We know many of you are looking for those drops. And as a reminder, you can get the exclusive Got Milk Halo Infinite nameplate and emblem. All you got to do is sign into your Xbox account, uh, head over to HaloWaypoint.com and hit settings, linked accounts, and then hit link Twitch. Just sign in on Twitch. And then all you got to do is watch on this stream or any participating streams, and you'll get that Got Milk emblem and nameplate. Not going to lie, Tashi's been rocking it. It's a pretty sweet one. Uh, if you no, you know. Well, Giggs is uh, looking like he knows the game right now because he is uh, playing phenomenally well. All these players trapped in the base on Team Sony as well. There's, uh, as you like to call it, the Palpatine nade, doing what it does best, spreading all of the dark side kind of uh, goodness, which is a paradox in itself. Some shots coming in. The beatdown's coming in as well from Giggs. He tries to get a little bit aggressive and uh, land a couple of knockout blows. But at 18 to 9, this is uh, starting to roll away, unfortunately, here for Team Sony. It seems like that has been the case on both sides of the groups on set. We're starting to see uh, a little bit of the team separate in terms of where they fall in overall standings. And, of course, as a reminder, these two groups can be battling all afternoon. And to close out the day, we will have our cross bracket finals. So the team that wins each group are the only teams that can advance to that final round. So you got to take down the teams in your pool. If you do, you'll face off against the winner of the other side of the bracket. Shots from, uh, One top, from Mines top, there as the player on top of the base. Wasn't able to do as much damage as maybe he would have uh, wanted to to stay alive. But 24 to 13, the score. Two players going to be here above Sony trying to do what he can to survive. Need some help from teammates. He's going to be screaming. If I'm in this position, I'm like, teammates, where are you? Keep me alive, please. Right. I don't know why I went very British there. But here we you, are. You did. Uh, it's fine. We, we won't hold it against you. We take a look at Coven. Coven's a player we talked about. Uh, Halo legend. If you haven't checked out Coven's screen, uh, just stream, excuse me, make sure you do. Where you can also see his screen on his stream, which is convenient. Yeah. In case you want to check out both, you can do two birds with one stone on that one. But as Onset said earlier, make sure you give some love to the creators in this tournament. Uh, make sure to pop over to their streams throughout the day. Give them a quick follow. Give them a prime sub. Whatever you can do to support these guys and gals, because they've been putting on the show. Not only today. Two, 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 two. each and every day. On uh, this is the P train going through uh, the plant side of the map at the moment. Giggs is uh, leading the charge. He is the uh, the engine pulling the tram because he is just running in straight lines and he's taking down everybody around him with the help from his teammates as well. Camo going to be popping in 15, but at 32 to 13, I don't think they're going to be too concerned about the camo. I think they're just going to be looking to close this one out. Right, at this time, they're just going to continue soaring and foring and absolutely frying because they're going to be very happy with the scoreboard. Like you said, Game Saker, Giggs, Foxy, and Twisted Minds. Definitely one of the threats that we talked about in this tournament and a team to be feared. And there is a camouflage being picked up, so I stand corrected as they do manage to get that into their hat. Oh. One player going to be uh, spotted out here. Yeah, we're going to go double, double, double Jaws music? <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. We won't give him that one, but uh, he was trying to play a little bit sneaky. He's got himself a heat wave, the meat wave, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when you combine that one with the, uh, the camouflage, Andy, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a potent combo, a very potent combo. In the last sound, we call it the uh, Onda de Calor. Nice. Jesus Christ. As well. So uh, you can call it that, or you can just call it the wave, the heat wave. Really, It's getting a bunch of familiar nicknames on set, mainly because we see it on screen so much. This thing has quickly become not only a favorite, but a pretty popular tool of destruction. Yeah, it really is a devastating, almost as much as my attempt at Spanish would be if I tried to repeat what you just said. But uh, I'll leave that to you. Far more talented man than me when it comes to, uh, to the language side of things. My shots, though, coming in from uh, Games Eager again. A uh, heat wave, though. It's not just a short-range weapon, something we've learned more and more in Halo Infinite. And you, medium range, you can do some big, big, chunky damage with that. Oh, you can. You can also bank those shots. We've seen players do time and time again. Great shots coming in from game set. are going to be a double kill from him with their continued top mid control, and they are just wreaking havoc. 43 to 18. Yeah, Coven's just trying to uh, pretend he doesn't exist. However, they know that he does. The ghost will be found, and the... It'll be Kali FPS will be taken down first, but now we're going to see Coven, unfortunately, who did manage to survive for some time at least. Unfortunately, join his teammate in the death screen. Four kills to go here, Andy. I want to see an overkill to close out. And there's one that goes. It's not going to be an over, it looks like, in the end. A double kill here from the other side. Just trying to jump out. Oh, boy! It was close. It was close. We need to get to, got to see the uh, the overkill, unfortunately, just the triple as we jump over to uh, to our other game going on right now. 39 kills on the board here. One shot blue down comes in. Isn't going to be traded out though, as we see those dynamos flying across the map once again. The uh, the lightning shards crackling away inside of the, the refrigerator as we do get the confirmation of the score in, uh, in a couple of games here. 50 to 20. Three and 11. I love that. And that's going to be a, that's quite a quite a margin, quite a delta, quite a gap on set 50 to 20 final score there.
20, yeah. What's uh, what's Spanish for Delta? Oh, um, see, I'm right. spot now. I got it. For Delta, yes. you're asking me the Spanish translation of a Greek term, uh, yes. and I'll tell you right now, onset. I have no idea. No idea. Okay, well, maybe you can. Uh, you can. I, I'll let you jump on the translator. Delta. A bit of a I would one, maybe say the score, and then entre los dos between the two. That's as close as I can. That's as close as I can get you. Hey, this man is pretending like he's uh, he's not fluent. He is unbelievable when it comes to languages. Trust me. Uh, it's uh, going to be your focus uh, taken away from your uh, your Spanish and your, your your talents for just a few seconds. Andy, as we jump back into another series here, Team Legion up by two. Capture the flag on Bazaar is where we find ourselves. Now, a little bit of a bizarre start there. You'll have to excuse the pun. I try not to use that every single time we play this map, but it's a little bit of a ring around the rosy coming. Oh boy, and also a questionable grenade comes right back down as well, but very rarely do you see a player able to scoot all the way around bottom rockets, then try to see what's going on with rockets and grapple, and then die back on their own porch, but kills being exchanged very quickly on both sides. Certainly our Legion picks up two. RPR picks up one as well. Go on, RPR. Let's see what he can do. Good, uh, Job from the observation team to jump back over to him. Nick Merckx is going to be weak. RPR versus Nick Merckx is the Apex Legends Battle of Reese. Oh, Nick Merckx is going to win it. RPR, come on, son. You got to hit those. Damn. Nick Merckx, the victor there on the top truck as he will win that battle, like you said. And players from all different communities represented here. But that will be the first flag going in for the side of Team Legion. Here's a long Ooh, look at the grapple! He takes down this rocket player with be huge! He manages to do it as well. Beautiful job with that grapple. That's a... I would say distance traveled. One of the most impressive grapples I've seen so far in Halo Infinite on Bazaar. It was. That was a fantastic grapple. Also going to pick up the dynamos as a reward. Just going to dynamo the back base and start to get some ticks right away. All sorts of dynamos in the tree. Not a place you'd want to be. And I think I've seen Nanners on the receiving end is just going to be ticked all sorts of. But somehow, Hutch and Nanners work together in the hut. The old school duo somehow staying alive in the palm. Legion's got the mangler, though. He's going to keep that pressure up. This is a one-shot beatdown weapon or two body shots and a headshot. You also win that fight. But you'll see a lot of times players decide to use it the two mm -hmm. shots and then sw switch into that BR oh, for a slightly low. easier and quicker headshot. Flag. Legion's going to be challenging through the double doors. Ooh, yeah, it doesn't quite connect though with that shot. Chase the BR, Legion doesn't need to. Because unfortunately, uh, well, the player on the oppos op opposing side, and Grenade did take themselves down. So Legion didn't have to get that finished. But now look at this, sneaky Legion. Mangler in hand. Ooh. There it is. Good work, teamwork coming in from the boys as uh, Nick Merckx is going to be furthest forward here. Overshield in their hands as well. This is going to be a flag. They're going to start running this in there. And Legion going full of Quan there. Unstoppable, staying alive on the hut, doing really well. Nick Merckx had a tiny bit of a flag fumble on the back of the tree, but not to worry about it. Just going to sprint it through bottom middle. Might actually go top bridge again. I'm hoping he goes front door. Of course he does. Nick Merckx knows the routes and takes the good route down low. He gets it to the double doors. Gets into the double doors. Oh Teammates pick up a few kills as well. But look at this flank coming in. They melt the player who tried to jump in behind. They get the flag back to the base. That will be another flag on the board. He will see it confirmed in just a few okay. seconds' time. There it is. RPR trying to do what he can to maybe get a little bit of map control here for the team Zentrae. Ooh, look at Legion coming off the pillars right away. Getting first shot on RPR wins that battle. So like we said, Legion no stranger. The guy's played a lot of Halo throughout the years. And uh, don't he's not just your uh, funniest guy on Twitch. He's also... Also, one hell of an FPS player and a straight shooter. Right now, they're doing pretty well. This could be another flag cap if they play this one well. They got kills in quick succession, so now you're going to hear uh, the comms coming in. Oh, he's coming in. Hutch, though, says, hey, this flag's not even out of the base yet. Don't worry about it, boys. i got the rockets. i got the big sticks. I can slow this one down. Making the sparks fly there as they try and get that return, and they will get it as well. Yeah, certainly would have been an opportunity for a bar run. I'm kind of surprised to see them run bottom rockets, which was a very different run than they've tried to do before. And and Hutch actually just comes right around bottom rockets and gets that double. That would have been a much more difficult play had Hutch had to get up into bar. But uh, in the end, uh, Hutch will get the double kill and will stay here at 2-0. to zero. It's going to also be a pull for Nanners. Face cam. Yeah, and this one moving as well. Look at the intensity. In the f oh, my. What? What is going on? This man is living every moment. This is the beatdown, though. Unfortunately, it will be taken down. But that was intense, Andy. Oh, that was that was one of the most intense face cams I've ever seen. That yeah, really was, without a doubt. As we go back over here to Nick Merck's going to get that re in the BR and just going to go right back out. Maybe take a look at what's going on with this flag at the front door as well. 
Dots onto double doors. Couple of grenades as well. We're going to be able to stop that player from uh, escaping as that flag is going to be uh, going to be moving as well. It's going to be inside of the base, and this is going to be the third flag going in as a uh, team. Legion are looking strong here, Andy. They have map control, they have flag caps. Everything is looking strong for them. Look at this slasher with the celebratory melees as well. Legion just yelling nonsense as he always is, which generally means yep. that he's either winning or losing, but regardless, he's having a great time. And they're up three to zero. <laughs> Bulldog in the hands of Team Zentrea and Hutch, though. And maybe this is their opportunity to push, get some kills on the board. If you can get in those close quarter battles. But one thing to say that, it's another thing to deal with Nick Merckx on... Your bar bridge you know, as he takes this one past the uh, the locals inside of the bar and uh, back out to the balcony. Unfortunately, a little bit of a stumble across the way. We've all been at the bar and we've all had a few too many and uh, know how that feels. But as he tries to rotate back to catch these players on the respawn, these shots are looking wow. crispy. Perfect oh, stuff from Nick Merckx. This is looking like another opportunity oh, for a flag. And gets the melee on the bridge player. They should be able to clean that player up because he's dropping should. pillars. Like you said, a really nice set of plays there from Nick Merckx. Hutch is just trying to find targets at the moment. And that's going to be the flag being put in when you would imagine. They need to get that return on the board, though, as uh, it looks like they're just going to let that one return on their own, and they're going to put that one in. So with six minutes and uh, 15 seconds or so left on the clock, it's four to zero. One more flag here to close this out. Absolutely now. Taking a look, a nice little thrust across top mid, and uh, Karma, as we've seen him with the equipment time and time again, not afraid to just throw himself into the action. Such a confident player. And a legendary one of that. He's going to pick up the first kill on Nanners, a uh, longtime brother of the Call of Duty scene, and now also just not done holding forward and pushing to the back of the base. Look at this uh, situational awareness, though, just making sure that he takes the 1v1, isolates the players, doesn't get into a position where he can be spotted by multiple players. Unfortunately, the spawn comes in on the thruster pack, which is, I've got to say, a little bit unfortunate. I didn't expect that spawn to come in myself, but you've got to be ready for those things, right? You've got to be ready for those things. Especially on Bazaar, we know it well. Anyone who's been playing enough Halo Infinite knows it well as well. You can really get caught off guard by those spawns it's it's such a difficult area to clean out when you're trying to pull the flag you can tell they've had control for the past 90 seconds or so yet they have not been able to get a pull finally they'll start those pulls that was three dead as well possibly four dead in quick succession they will be spawning on the rocket side of the map by the looks of things though so legion you can see him he's rocking back and forward in his chair he knows that this is the last flag to go in and it is a, a stated fact by the way if you rock backwards and forward while you're running the flag it moves faster that is just physics everyone Look at Legion's flag running. That is beautiful. Sprint running down bottom middle. Great route. They're going to win that game 5-0. to zero. It's the rocket. I'm telling you. It's, that, that, that doesn't happen, that clean flag run without the rock. It's true. He's having a rock in good time. Yeah, 100%. That will be uh, the game going their way, though. Like you say, and uh, looking very, very convincing at doing it as well. As we jump now back over to uh, our other game going on as well, Team Sony versus Team Geeks. Team Sony, as a reminder, that Sony, Cali, Coven, Vegas going up against Giggs, Giggs, Game Saber, Foxy, and Mines in this game. Let's take a look at Sony for the first time here. Series right now in favor of Giggs, 2-0. to zero. Also, two flags on the board for them in our game three as well. People trapped in the treehouse here, which is uh, not where you really want to be, especially when you're taking that damage or expecting the peak at any moment. And that is exactly what did happen. We'll see... Uh, a little bit of the POV here of MLG Foxy with the commando in hand, which is something we haven't seen a huge amount of so far today, Andy. But this thing can shred. I feel like this is one of the highest skill gap guns we have. It is, and you, you could argue maybe the highest skill gap gun. And not just that, but also probably the largest uh, difference in terms of the, the time to kill of a player who really knows how to use this gun versus, like, me. Uh, in terms of really being able to hit some really good kill times with that gun, especially on mouse and keyboard, you can shred with that commando. They certainly can. There's a nice double kill for Geeks, though, making a triple. Not going to happen. But no, as Coven slows him down for just a few seconds. A flagpole is going to come in, though, as uh, Coven's now going to have to deal with a player behind. Here's a grapple. One shot the street, one shot the street. One shot, Doesn't manage to get the clean up, unfortunately. But once again, just showing how that grapple is such a useful piece of equipment to get from point A to point B so quickly. Yeah, it's a nice stuff from Mines. Uh, doesn't hit the grapple he wanted, but it will be able to just ro rotate right back to the truck and hut. They're going to grab an overshield as well, so they're just going to keep on trucking 2-0 to zero with that overshield on the push. A little bit worried there. I saw the uh, the plasma pistol, and you've got no overshield. The last thing you want to see is a plasma pistol, but if you can take it out of your opponent's hands, that's how quickly that you can shred some shields with it as well. There's a bulldog. As Christmas comes early here for MLG Foxy. Yeah, that flight's going to be ran right away. Gig's already just pre naming rocket side, also just jumping up. He's actually going to take the fast run up bridge and does it with... Oh, my God. Uh, takes a lot of damage very quickly, but manages to stay alive. Perfect timing from Gig's there.
Yeah, and what's going to calm him down is just seeing that kill feed as uh, Foxy managed to pick up two kills. So even if he went down there, there would have been a teammate in position to rally that one home, or maybe he could have just done it himself coming off of that respawn. So uh, control has been heavily in the favor of Team Giggs here. Looking strong, like I mentioned before this uh, series got underway. And uh, I tell you what, Giggs didn't miss many bullets as well with this BR in his hands. I tell you what was interesting there too, Onsen. We actually have not seen this, you and I being able to watch all of North American's uh, competitive infinite so far. What Giggs just did there was actually actually faked a double door run. If you saw that, he looked like he was going to go from the lightning nades to bottom mid, which would have forced any opponents that might have had angles rocket side or top bridge to be aiding front doors, but then actually doubled back towards bridge, which is interesting. We're going to have to see if players start to adopt that because there's such limited lanes. Oh my gosh, it's a party now, bottom rockets, but there's such limited lanes here on Bazaar that you really can kind of use those fake flag runs to try to bait grenades. Yeah, I think it's something we're going to see certainly develop at the top, top level. There's so many different elements to run in the flag in Halo Infinite than previous previous halos you can obviously juggle it which is kind of the classic way yeah, to move it as quickly as possible but you can also sprint but that gives away your uh, your position on the map that you have with the flag so you can't be a sneaky and then you when you're walking with it and you're not sprinting you are you know undercover so to speak and you cannot give your uh, location away so we are going to see those things develop as uh, players and teams work out the best way to not only get it from point a to point b but also duke out the opponents as well nice shots there looks like coming out of vegas against game sager vegas is going to win that one and now staying alive bottom middle this is going to be mine. He's trying to stay alive. That's some good kills. A reversal there, bottom middle to stay alive. Runs into two more, though. So we'll have to see what he wants to do off the respawn screen. Clover now trying to do what he can to just force his team inside of this base. Two players have fallen on his team, though. The double doors player is going to push back and get the kill. And clean him up. Not too happy about that one. That sounds of things. Clover thought it was a pretty clean kill. Pretty clean kill. Right there, uh, surprised again. Maybe dinged through a little bit of Geo from his point of view, but now taking a look at what might be able to happen. Vegas just waiting and baiting on this flag. Has the thruster in hand. Might need to use it to win this battle, but dies from pillars and bridge. Cannot get out of that 1v2. And the Overlord was looking down there upon the peasants. There's, uh, there's going to be a grapple here. Manages to get the kill, but... Not in position to get that flag moving. There is a flag Ooh. across the board, though. And look at this. What a time to jump on to uh, to Cali now. Maybe the chance for... Does he do it? The kill? No! no, he has to reload. Oh, <laughs> it's the last thing you want to happen. Ah, oh, my heart goes out to you. I think he was going to get it with uh, Halo Infinite's new uh, multi-kill timing, too. I think he was going to get the over there. I think it was going to be generously given to him. But I love how he just desperately pops out the bulldog for distance shots, <laughs> trying to... Trying to, hit it like a trying to hit it like a Mastiff from distance. But look at this play. He's not done yet. He uses the last grapple wisely, and they might get a stop here still. They might be able to. And Coven's there with the Rockets as well. So they do get that stop. They should be able to get the return. There is a player, Double Doors, who's Foxy, but he's going to be taken gonna down. going to get it. I'll tell you what. What a succession of plays this has been coming in from Cali. Uh, very impressive to watch. I still feel for him, though. I guess, yeah, it hurts, doesn't it? The, the one thing you want to say is coming away from Twitch drivers, I got an overkill. I got the overkill. You can't take that away from anyone. That's true. Cali there, but by the way, we, we started off seeing what he was doing whipping through double doors, picking up that really nice kill, just like skipping across the map and really difficult to take down. So, like you said, really nice uh, string of kills, string of plays there coming in from Cali. No one in their base except for spawners. He's going to be getting that return back to his base, just keeping things nice and simple. Oh, Andy, it's my gameplay. Did you see that? Garbage? Yeah, yeah actually, I actually did see it. I was going to say, this looks a lot like uh, what I see on onset screen. It was actually a full bag of a black bag of garbage. I need you, bro. Feels bad, man. I was hoping you'd be like, you know, from our locker or something. can't say that about yourself. You should give yourself a little bit more. Hey man, I if you set me up, I played. I played for Navi the other day, Andy. You <laughs> did actually, and you and you and you put wins on the board. Let's not let's not forget it. Exactly. Let's uh, yeah, you know, put you back in your place, son. Anyway, let's go back to the game. Team Gigs up two to zero at the moment. Mines with 26 kills in the game, by the way. Uh, game taker just behind him with 27. Then two guys are popping off. Yeah, they are absolutely uh, putting on a show. As you take a look at just how many kills are on the other side, uh, let me put it in short, not as many. Uh, great uh, numbers from both of them, as we'll still be at 3-0 here. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> That's the kind of thing I'd say after spending 30 seconds trying to work out the difference. Like, bigger like numbers. Big, bigger numbers. Larger larger oh, units of counting. Giggs picks up one. Uh, and now there's one of the chance to uh, to pull this one. There's a couple of more kills going their favor. They're up by three. We've got the flag. We've all been there. It's like going shopping. And without the shopping list, forgetting one of the things when you get home, you're like, ah, i got to go back again. 
The flag will be uh, will be pulled. They're taking this one up to the oh, bar. No, no, no come sugar. on. Time. This is going to be the worst cup of tea gonna... of all time. Ooh, it doesn't cost him. I don't know how, but Giggs always lives through the bridge and hut run. I'm going to give credit to his teammates for laying down the cover fire right now. That's going to be another flag in four to zero. One more flag to go. Four to zero in a D. Now Geek's going to be moving back to the rocket side. Picks up that Mangler, something you certainly will have to see players controlling as we get into the later rounds and we get towards our finals. Also, the rockets certainly going to be useful. And there is Palpatine. Once again, it's the double Palpatine, Andy. Your favorite. It's true. It's a, it's really fierce. Uh, you know, you, you, we all have that visual in our in our heads of, of Al Palpatine just extending both arms, and uh, that's going to be the game, though. 4-0, to zero, time will expire as they were thinking about the fifth flag, but it doesn't matter. 4-0 to zero will be our final score. They will also win the series. 3-0 to zero in the series. Like you say, everyone is playing best of fives today, so Team Coven, Geeks continue their extremely good form in the tournament so far as we now jump over to a uh, cdm versus team aircool 2-0 to team aircool and uh, but 1-1 in the game andy this is looking like a a tight game as we said cdn one of the halo ogs as well Puckin and i were lucky to land with this guy in jersey back in the day back in dmax basement and cdn one of the funniest dudes i've ever had the chance to play games with so it's no surprise that that man has built an amazing community on twitch and as chris said very famous for his uh his uh, his motto, his line, one v one lockout for a dollar. <laughs> we'll have to see if uh, he can find a new map on Halo Infinite to to bring the uh, wallet back out for. As uh, we're going to jump aboard with Myth now, as he's moving through the double doors. Teammates managed to pick up the overshield, and this is going to be a charge. The uh, the horn sound, and they hold forward inside of the base. Team Echo putting the pressure on a one v one here. Had to reload again. It's the second time we've seen it, Andy. Always make sure you got enough bullets in the gun to get the job done. I'm just going to say it, right? Bizarre plays, uh, I'm going to avoid the pun here, but Bizarre, Bizarre plays very different from a lot of traditional Halo maps. I'll and you need to slay. Okay, thank you. you. And you need to slay and overslay, but speaking of, the slaying has been done because we have Myth juggling this flag. And I got to say, that's the third mouse and keyboard player in a row that's missing these juggles. So I need to see the mouse and keyboard players on top of the flag juggles. I think Myth, though, is going to make he sure the rest you. of this run is good. Run he heard you. He he knew that this is a little I'll slip go. up. We've all been there, and now they're going to pick up the slays by the looks of things as well. There's a bulldog. The flag is still down. The flag One is going to be moved by the looks of things shot. back to the base. Yeah, yeah, so that is going to be the flag being put home. Team Air Cool go up two to one. Yeah, pretty close game here. And even though we have a two to zero series in favor of Team Aircool, like you said, still a very close game here. Only one flag separating these two is CDN going to do whatever they can to bounce back. As a reminder, Team Aircool, it's going to be 72 hours, Funk Bomb and Myth on the side of Aircool. And on the side of CDN, it's CDN the third, Requiem, Shazam, and Tanner Slays. Looking. Flag moving once again. Too bad going to be coming off respawn, though. Maybe if he could have just uh, snuck oh, up on that ledge a little bit quicker, he might have the opportunity to survive. That's a big win coming in from Requiem, though, to get that return to base. If he doesn't win that fight, then that flag gets out through those double doors, and then you're fighting through the wall of players coming off the respawn. So really important for him to pick up that kill. There's another one as well. There's the dynamo grenades, which are micro power weapons, and to be honest with you, pretty much power weapons on this map for information collecting, damage being done. That's so always a nice ball. reward to be able to pick up another 1v1 going down on the pillars, which will be won by Requiem. So Requiem really stepping up here when it's a big, big battles. Yeah, and the, and the tough thing is they just need to make sure that they're working together. Like, you're not going to even, especially in tournaments like this, is an overshell grab, by the way, on the POV of Myth that's going to give Team Aircool even more control bottom middle. But a game type like... The CTF Bazaar, you need to have such coordination. You really need to be pushing the same side of the map. Your opponent can slay, excuse me, can spawn in this really obnoxious and difficult position. So really they need to show a lot of teamwork in this last minute 40. Angler shot's not going to be connecting. Myth's going to have to back up here as the spike grenade comes in. The flag is going to be moved. The beatdown comes in though. It's going to slow things down. Might be an opportunity for a flag return. If you can keep it within one, Tanner going big with that return, then there's always a chance for that last second cheeky pull behind enemy lines. You get that flag out, you pick up a couple of slaves on the way back to tie this up. So they say it over, yeah. Absolutely not. To take a look, Tanner slaves. Just a little bit of peeking on the bridge as well. Has help from the team as well. Kills are going to be traded out, but still maybe a little bit of an opportunity to push as we take a look at what Shazam's up to in the back bar. Well, that's what they needed to do. Get back into position to get a flag pull and getting the kills along the way was perfect. Shazam, that is a big, big play from you, my friend, as he gets that flag out of the treehouse. He managed to throw it down bottom mid. I like this as well. Look, the call to slay coming in. They know they can't force this one home. They have to pick up kills first. They try to drop and shoot. They do see a player on the opposite double doors. We need to see CDN stay alive here. Bottom middle, he's getting grapple challenge, though. And surprisingly, Funk tries to make something happen. CDN's going to get one assist. They're on the re, though. Let's see if this one goes back.
Yeah, it's looking like he's going to be there to get that return. Clutch play coming in from the man on your screen to get that flag back to base. Only 25 seconds or so left for them to get inside that base once more and get the flag moving. Otherwise, this is going to be game and series. And you have to wonder if maybe they should have ran a little bit faster. They did drop a shoot. Overshield has not been popped, though. As you see, that's going to be an opportunity there as they're going to be grabbing that, but only 13 seconds on the clock. Make that 10. And that is... Uh, Sands of time once again falling down through the glass as it's uh, four seconds now, three seconds. No one in possession, a position, I should say, excuse me, to get that flag moving. Team Echo will win the game two to one and more importantly, win that series at three to zero. Yeah, it's going to be a tough result for Team CDN. Despite the amount of talent on that team, they will fall. Air cool just looking too tough here in this tournament so far. We certainly are. And uh, I was pretty impressed with, uh, I gotta say, Team CDN. Definitely a step up in performance from what we saw. Uh, last time in the first series, I think for them really started to find a little bit of uh, coordination and uh, a little bit of teamwork. Now we jump over to watch Team Echidna versus Team Autumn. Team Echidna up 2-0, to zero, not only in game, but in the series as well. Yeah, looking really good. And Echidna picking up where she and the crew left off and looking very strong in this tournament. If you'll remember, they also won their last series 3-0. to zero, So they're looking to 6-0 off of this. A nice little flag juggling here coming from Echidna. She's going to continue this bottom rocket run as well. Yeah, this is uh, looking like it is going to be a cap. Two kills did go down to her team's favor. So this is looking like a clear run towards the base. Easy job for her to do. Just jump up, put that flag home and make it three to zero. So everybody on the team doing their job perfectly there. Absolutely. And uh, now we'll go to switch over over to Chilled You, still on the Echidna side. And going to be very happy with that flag run. Going to be three to zero on the back of the base. Serial trying to cause all sorts of havoc coming in from the bar side. He'll be caught off by two spawners there. Very difficult to win those 1v2s in the back of the base, especially when you're alone. But now we go over to the POV of Autumn. Let's see what Autumn can do. Kind of caught in the hut here. Take a little bit of damage in the kill feed. You're seeing Echidna pick up two. You're seeing Echidna pick up three. Teammate steals the overkill. The worst feeling in the world. And uh, But a big play coming in from uh, Echidna to pick up those three kills. Now, can she get that flag moving once more? Her teammate's doing it instead, and she's going to continue to slay. Yeah, nice shots against Jake and Big. We'll pick up the perfect as well. We'll finally die from the double doors, but fantastic shots from her. By the way, we're going to have Echidna so stoked in Raleigh coming up this weekend, so make sure give her a follow, give her some love, and her whole entire team on Twitch uh, if you want to support them, and that goes for all creators in today's show, putting on a great show of Halo Infinite all day. Double kill here oh, for King J. Right. Triple. Triple was, uh, he's basically gifted it. The player turned away and presented himself with the back smack. And uh, it's an opportunity you can't afford to not take. But here's Echidna. It's a, a flashback in time for now as she's once again putting in a flag. Four to zero, one flag to go. It's like we said, another day at work for Lady Echidna. She's going to pick up another one and the entire team just doing work. We've shown a lot of Echidna's POV, but we got to give credit to the entire squad because they have been slaying out all day. And uh, that's no exception here. Four to zero in CTF Bazaar. I'm going to be moving with uh, King J into the front of the base. Nice shots once again. Autumn going to be taken down. And uh, I said uh, in the intro, keep an eye on uh, Echidna because she's a shooter. And you can see it here. Jacob Bake is going to be challenging just that jump. Just wins him the battle there. But she's been uh, hitting pretty much every shot that's uh, been on her POV for the last few minutes. I mean, she's been frying. Anyone who's been watching Jen since H5 knows that uh, not only is she a fantastic player, but also a fantastic shot and uh, certainly... One of the creators we expected to shine in today's games, and she and the entire squad have been doing that. They will stay up 4-0 to zero here with six minutes left, but you have to think they're probably going to get a fifth flag before that clock ticks down. Another double kill here for Echidna as she moves in, looking for an opportunity, a triple. Nobody there to uh, to be found, though, as King J will pick up a third kill. He's playing inside of the base, though. There's that. Oh, no. That beat down. Flag moving once again as she almost takes down another on the double doors. That would have been another big, big play, but uh, that's a great indication, Andy, once again. Like you were mentioning, how strong the acceleration is on that thrust. You can turn fights on the head in an instant. Yeah, absolutely. And once again, I talked about it before, but Jen does so well in those battles to not trade, and she had a nice play against Jake and make on the flag to not trade. Going to challenge here from Autumn is King J. Will get taken down eventually from Pillars, but that flag's still going to be ran through the front door. This could be the last one. Could well be the final flag and the final action of this series as well. The flag will be punched home by the looks of things. It will be Chilled You who will have the celebratory beatdown that we love to see as they will take the game 5-0 to zero and the series 3-0 to zero as well. By the way, gotta love it. Every time we're cutting over to these POVs, you see on Echidna right now, all the follows coming in. So shout out to all of you in Twitch chat, uh, giving all these creators follows. That's one of the best part about Rivals is to just have, you know, all these creators on display. But Puckett, some pretty amazing games so far and a lot of 3-0s.
Yes, I do want to give a shout out, even though Team Autumn Ceridius lost that game, he is coming in with one of the highest ranked scores of any of our players. He's nearing the 2000 mark. I was looking through while you guys were chatting. I've just been grinding on Halo Tracker. We've got 15 <laughs> players who are in the top 300 in different categories. So this is a stacked bracket. And I think you guys nailed it in that last one. I am becoming a fan of Lady Echidna. I didn't watch a ton of Halo 5. Gotta she be. is now officially on the radar for Halo Infinite and Raleigh moving forward. On set, though, two rounds in, and in Group A, it's getting a little bit spicy. We might see a showdown of two 2-0 two squads to find out who is moving in with that group title. In Group B, it's still anyone's game. Yeah, I think we're starting to see uh, maybe a little bit of, you know, a couple of teams separating themselves from the packs, which is always interesting to see, right? Because you're always looking at those games and going, how good are they? How good are they going to be against this other team? And when we get to see them finally match up, that's what it's all about, right? Because we've obviously got another round of games to go here before we get into, you know, our finals and all of that good stuff. So I'll keep my eyes on a lot, few players because there's a few players who are starting to heat up right now and seem to be hitting a lot of shots. Uh, Andy, we saw C. Nanders. We saw Hutch. That made old school Puckett super happy. Any other legends you're looking out to see here in the next round? Uh, let's see. I mean, I think we're seeing a lot of three O's, like you guys said, as I take a look at the rosters here. I think I'm going to keep an eye on a lot of the same players that we've been talking about. But the question is, like Mark said, how good are they, right? What can the 72 hours and the myths of the world, how are they going to step up when our teams that are all three and O match up against each other?